So by now you should be pretty clued in on the X100V and what it's capable of. This is a Fujifilm camera that sports a leaf shutter system and as of currently it is the only Fujifilm camera that inherits this feature. But what's the difference between a leaf shutter and your more common focal plane shutter? Why should you care? And what are the benefits that make this feature so important? Let's get it. Let's take a look at the focal plane shutter. Most cameras have this as it is more practical for most use cases and is cheaper to manufacture. This is your digital camera's image sensor. The shutter is positioned in front of the sensor. In front of that would be your lens and within the lens there are aperture blades. So in order, the aperture blades control the amount of light that hits the sensor. The shutter controls the amount of time that amount of light reaches the sensor and the sensor itself will produce an image based on the amount of light, the amount of exposure to the light and how sensitive it is to the light. So how does the focal shutter function? Most modern focal shutters travel vertically. Two collapsible curtains travel in sequence, creating a space in between where light can reach the sensor. It works like a scanner where this space travels down the sensor to expose the image. The benefits of a focal plane shutter is that it is very fast. On Fujifilm cameras such as the X-T4 for example, the fastest mechanical shutter speed is 1 8,000th of a second. The downsides are that it can cause an effect called rolling shutter where fast moving subject matter can look stretched or warped and that it creates a distinct noise every time it actuates. Now let's take a look at the leaf shutter. The reason why it isn't as common is because leaf shutters are built into the lens rather than the camera body and since lenses vary in size you would have to have a different size shutter for every lens which makes it much more costly to assemble. This is why it is more common to find leaf shutters in cameras with a fixed lens such as the X100V. Unlike the focal plane shutter, the leaf shutter does not sit between the image sensor and the aperture blades, rather it is in front of the aperture blades. The leaf shutter is made of leaf shaped blades which when activated converges out from the center in a uniform manner then travels in reverse back to its original position. The benefits to this design is that due to the way it opens and closes, light is more uniformly distributed and does not suffer the rolling shutter effect. Since it is built into the lens at the point of smallest diameter, the shutter requires less movement over a smaller surface area, hence a much quieter actuation. The downside to the leaf shutter is that it cannot match the speed of the focal plane shutter. The X100V has an effective maximum mechanical shutter speed of 1 2,000th of a second at f2 and incrementally increases in speed, reaching a maximum mechanical shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second at f4.5 and beyond. So far you might be wondering, okay, so besides the leaf shutter being very very quiet, there really isn't a huge advantage over the focal plane shutter. In fact, the focal plane shutter sounds superior due to its higher maximum shutter speed. Well, yes, in general, that's fair to say. However, let's move on to the main topic of comparison and why the X100V with its leaf shutter is truly awesome. And that is to do with flash photography. A flash will illuminate a scene for a very brief moment. And because of the way the focal shutter works, the speed of the shutter needs to be slow enough to ensure the time between the first curtain travel and the second curtain is enough to expose the entire sensor to the light emitted by the flash. Push the shutter speed higher and you may get an issue known as banding whereby black bars cover a portion of either the top or bottom of your image. This is due to the curtains not syncing with the speed of the flash, blocking the light from the flash reaching a portion of the sensor. For most modern digital cameras, this speed is around 1 2 50th of a second. You will not have this problem with a leaf shutter, since it opens outwards in a circular motion from the center of the sensor. Light coverage onto the sensor is uniform from start to end of actuation. This basically means that the speed at which the leaf shutter can sync with flash is significantly higher than that of a focal plane shutter. What's 1 2 50th of a second compared to 1 4,000th of a second? A whopping four stops of light. <sighs> Jay, this is super technical and complicated. A lot of numbers are flying over my head and if you don't explain it to me like I'm five, I'm gonna mess up your viewer retention rate. Okay, 
Okay, let's skip ahead to the visual comparisons, shall we? Here's the perfect scenario where the leaf shutter shines. Here's a scene with a foreground subject matter. The background is nice, but the downside is the subject is facing away from the sun, and that means there is a strong backlight. I want to have the subject matter in focus with nice background separation, all while keeping the entire image exposed evenly. What happens if I shoot without flash and I want the subject matter to be properly exposed? Well, the compromise is that the background will be overexposed. Time to activate flash. For this demonstration, I will use the XS10's focal plane shutter and on-camera flash. Our goal is to properly expose the subject matter, but at the same time, ensure the background is properly exposed as well. The flash will help expose the subject matter, so we need to focus on the exposure of the background. What are our limitations? Because of the focal plane shutter, the maximum shutter speed for flash sync is 1 250th of a second. So let's dial that in. Okay, still overexposed. What are my options? Lower ISO. Lowest I can go is 160. Still too bright. My final option is to increase the aperture value. I would love to have a good background separation, but proper exposure takes priority, so I must compromise. Okay, now the background is properly exposed. My subject matter is very dark, but the flash should light it up properly. I'll focus and take the shot. The result? The subject is exposed, yes, but the background isn't as out of focus as I would like and makes the scene look a little bit busy. Why is that? This is because due to the limitation of the shutter speed being so low, in order to compensate and expose the background properly, the only solution is to increase the aperture value. The higher the aperture value, the less bokeh or less separation there is between the foreground and background. Now let's switch over to the X100V. Let's begin by dialing down the ISO. Next, select our desired aperture value for nice subject separation. Finally, let's finish balancing the background exposure by increasing the shutter speed value and take the shot. The result? Very similar to the XS10. However, the subject matter is well separated from the background. Compare this to the previous image and you can clearly see the difference. Due to the higher flash sync speed of the leaf shutter, the aperture value doesn't need to be as high to properly expose the background. Therefore, you can achieve the same exposure but with a better separation between foreground and background. But Jay, can't I achieve this on a focal plane shutter with the aid of high speed sync flash and or an ND filter? Yes, of course you can. But what you are doing is creating compromise. High speed sync will lower the output strength of your flash considerably the higher the shutter speed. And not only are ND filters an additional accessory to purchase, it will, to some extent, affect the image quality in some way. With the X100V and its leaf shutter, there are no compromises. This makes the X100V capable of taking evenly exposed images in the harshest of lighting conditions and not even break a sweat. Let's push the envelope even further. The X100V also has a four-stop ND filter built in. What does that mean? It means you could essentially simulate flash photography at night during daytime. So if you still can't justify buying an X100V because of its price, I hope learning a bit more about what makes this camera so powerful and versatile and worth a lot more than its asking price will convince you to part ways with your hard-earned cash. Now, I don't even get a commission for this product promotion. I just love this camera so much that I want others to feel how I feel. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time.